Thank, thank you, Dr. Ranjit and uh, Dr. Raki for the nice introduction and thank you for inviting me. Uh, let me share my slides. Uh, Some problem. Uh, this is uh, one participant can share at a time or multiple? Uh, sir, uh, you are co host, you can share, sir. Only uh, no one has shared, sir. I don't know, it's not. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, is there any error coming on the share screen button? No, it's not coming, but uh, there is some problem. You can check, might be, it is in a basic or it is in advanced option tab where the PPT you have opened. Was there for a second and then again it vanished. Let me see. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Is it there? Uh, no, sir. It's not there. Sir, a green button share screen is there at the base of. Yeah, I'm, I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, yeah. It's asking one participant can share at a time. Okay. So when I click over there, mm -hmm. actually nothing happens. Uh, sir, uh, you click on the center button. I think you are clicking on arrow button. You click on the center. Okay. Now yes. is it there? Yes, sir. Now yes. it's coming, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, sorry for the glitch. And thank you once again for giving me this opportunity. Uh, basically, you know, I, as uh, Raki Ma'am told uh, the participants that uh, I specialize in chemical development of fingerprints. But my uh, endeavor is to go from uh, surface specific compositions to broad spectrum ones. Those which can detect fingerprints on multiple type of uh, uh, crime evidence. So, uh, you know, on, uh, so, uh, on our fingertips, we have crisscross lines, which we call sorry, finger ridges. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Uh, can you make this as a full slide mode so it will be more visible? Uh, make a pardon, should I? Uh, a full slide mode, sir. Uh, like I on the top, that. you can see the from current slide. It is showing. Is it okay yes, now? It's perfect, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So, uh, you know, on our fingertips, we have crisscross lines, which we call finger ridges. And nature has provided them to us so that we may have a firm grip of the object we intend to hold. But the design made by these ridges is so unique that it is not repeated on the fingers of the same person as well as on the fingers of any other person. Uh, what we cannot see over here is that all along these ridges are studied with small holes, which are called sweat pores. And as the name implies, sweat continuously oozes out of those holes. So when our finger touches an object, and in our case, a crime uh, evidence, it leaves an impression of ridges exactly in the same design as it is on our fingertips. But we cannot see the uh, deposition, uh, we cannot see that impression because sweat is colorless. That's why we call it a latent fingerprint or a hidden fingerprint. Sweat contains 99% water, half a percent inorganic ions are there and the remaining half percent are organic molecules. And what we do is we select any one component of sweat and by some physical or chemical means, we transform it into a color derivative so that whatever is hidden, whatever is latent becomes visible. And we say that the fingerprint has developed or the fingerprint has been detected. 
which which uh, sweat constituent we'll choose that depends upon the nature and the color of the surface on which we want to de uh, develop the fingerprint. So the most common technique which is used all over the world is uh, the powder method. The powder basically it fixes the moisture and oily components. Oily means the small the you know uh, smaller uh, organic molecules having low molecular weight. And this is, you know, the technique is based on the premise of double adsorption. Adsorption means absorption only on the surface. So it has got two broad components. One is called adhesive and the other is called colorant. The adhesive gets adhered to the sweat residue and the colorant gets adhered to the uh, adhesive. As I've shown, it's a phenomenon of double adsorption. And because of the color, the fingerprint becomes visible. Now this is available in various forms of kits. Each kit costs uh, about, in our country, we import them. The cost is about uh, say 80,000 to 1 lakh rupees. And there are multiple compositions. It's very simple as I said earlier, but the problem is that you have to choose a proper composition for the proper surface. Depending upon the nature, whether it's absorbent or it's non-absorbent, what is the color, it's white, it's multicolored or it's a, of a specific color, the texture is smooth or rough. So you should have a knowledge of the chemistry of the powder which you're going to pick up for a particular crime scene evidence. And unfortunately, the police personnel, they are not well trained. Another problem is that it fails to detect fingerprints on despoiled crime scenes. These days, you know, the criminals are also wise enough to know that they'll be caught on the basis of fingerprint evidence. So their endeavor is to commit the crime and thereafter erase their fingerprints. This is not very difficult. Commit a crime and spray water on the crime scene. The fingerprints will get dissolved away. Commit a crime and set the room on fire. The fingerprints will get charred. Stab someone with a knife and bury the knife beneath soil. Even if the police comes to know where the knife is, when you dig it out, mud and clay and sand will be clinging to it. You will be forced to wash it. And once you wash it, the fingerprints will also get washed away. So, you know, this was our endeavor. Our forensic students used to visit uh, various crime scenes along with the mobile crime team of uh, Delhi police. And they used to tell us that the policemen, they will pick up just one uh, composition at random, apply it. If the fingerprints come, it's okay. If not, he'll say uh, we were unsuccessful in detecting the fingerprints. So, you know, what we thought was that we should have a composition which has got multiple, uh, you know, applications. It should be applicable to a wide number of crime scene evidence, not on a particular one. So that these people do not have to apply their mind, which composition to use and which not to use. And secondly, it should have a multiple application as far as the various crime scene environments are concerned. A moist evidence, a charred evidence, uh, you know, evidence which has been dug out from the soil. All these should be taken care of by one single composition. So, I'll talk about two of the innovations which we did in our laboratory. But before that, what we did was we studied the uh, inorganic composition of sweat very thoroughly. And what we found, sodium, potassium, chloride, sul uh, sulfate, they're all present, but they remain unchanged with time. Yeah. If I deposit sodium ions in sweat residue, it will remain sodium. Potassium will remain potassium. But there are two other components, prominent components, magnesium and calcium. They are discharged by metabolism of bones. They are always present. They do not remain in their original form. They react with air and they are converted into magnesium oxide and calcium oxide. And both these compounds are insoluble in water. This has got both advantage as well as disadvantage. The disadvantage is that you cannot fix an insoluble substance with a solution of a fingerprint reagent. If I take calcium, I make a solution of calcium chloride, it will give color derivative with large number of dyes and large number of ligands. But when I spray those ligands, those dyes on the sweat residue or latent fingerprint, nothing happens. Because by the time I spray, within seconds, calcium is converted into calcium oxide. That is a disadvantage. The advantage is that insoluble salts in general are very stable, at least as compared to soluble salts. The whitewash in your home is nothing but calcium oxide. 
and if one doesn't tamper with it nothing is going to happen to it even after 10 years so that was our target aim that if somehow we are able to fix insoluble calcium ions then even if the police reaches the scene of crime quite late they will be still be able to detect it because as i said calcium oxide is very stable as compared to sodium potassium chloride or sulfate if somebody sets a room on fire nothing happens to calcium oxide it will remain as calcium oxide since it is insoluble in water if somebody tries to wash the fingerprint again nothing is going to happen so you know this was our target area to uh, fix calcium oxide and uh, magnesium oxide in the sweat residue the problem again the same thing no solution is going to react with the insoluble salt now that was the time you know about 10 or 15 years ago when a new type of catalyst we call it phase transfer catalyst was you know taking shape in chemistry catalyst you all understand anything which increases the rate of reaction phase transfer catalyst is a special type of catalyst and as as i said it came into chemistry just 15 years ago which can bring liaison between two reagents which are in a different state of matter calcium oxide is in the solid state our reagent is in the solution state normally they will not react but in presence of phase transfer catalyst they are going to react so this is how i show it uh, diagrammatically i took rose bengal it is in solution it's sodium salt all sodium salts are soluble the sweat residue contains calcium oxide normally they do not react but when i add this catalyst there are large number of phase transfer catalysts i chose tertiary tetrabutyl ammonium iodide i can bring a liaison between calcium oxide and rose bengal these two would not normally react but in presence of the phase transfer catalyst we abbreviate it as the ptc they do react and they give a sort of purple colored uh, fingerprints as i'll show you you know our target as i said was multiple applications so these this phn or this formulation detects fingerprints on absorbent items like paper and for on uh, cardboard non absorbent like glass and metal and semi absorbent like adhesive tapes and polythene remember one composition and it has got so many applications just to demonstrate that you can see the fingerprint developed by us on glossy paper on glass and even on thermocol thermocol is such a rough surface but see the fingerprint has come out very clear not only that this tape which you see over here is a special type we call it duct tape and this was given to me presented to me by australian federal police it is this tape which is used by suicide bombers to tie explosives on their bodies it's a very sturdy tape and uh, you know from a forensic point of view there was no such technique by which fingerprints could be detected on this tape so the australian police was uh, were in contact with me they said you please try out the rose bengal method and by slightly changing the composition we could detect the fingerprints on uh, on this duct tape of course you know we were lucky in this endeavor we could do it in a very fast time because most of our time goes into what we call aid studies if we get a successful formulation then you know we try to uh, de uh, detect old fingerprints two days four days old one week two weeks three weeks one month two month the longer we go uh, we say the better our composition is now in this case case uh, age studies were not required a terrorist will wrap explosives on his body less than an hour before he is to strike and the police will reach the scene of crime less than an hour after he has struck so the fingerprints are as good as fresh ones and therefore you know all we wanted to see was whether it works or whether it does not work and fortunately it worked and we have passed on the technology to the australian federal police because uh, the tape was given to us by them and this a uh, metallic item spoon was kept in water for almost 12 hours and thereafter we applied the reagent and you can see the fingerprint has come out quite clearly so as far as moist items are concerned uh, sometimes you know the crime scene is outdoor it is raining there is high humidity as it is today and the fingerprints get washed out this is accidental sometimes as i said the suspect is too clever he'll deliberately spray water to you know erase the fingerprints so in either case even after 12 hours this formulation works 
Our second formulation, uh, this was already known, uh, uh, small particle reagent. Here, the base material which was being used was molybdenum 4 sulfide, MOS2. This had some problems. This is dark gray or even blackish in color. So the, if the crime scene evidence itself is dark in color, it is very difficult to get a contrast. Secondly, it's a very toxic salt. And this is helpful only in detecting fingerprints on submerged items, on moist items. Somebody uses a weapon, throws it into a lake, you recover that item, this will work. So this is non-fluorescent. You know, these days we have multiple colored surfaces. And if, if the composition is fluorescent, you can detect it, uh, uh, you know, yeah, even if it is having a large number of colors. So in order to overcome them, we replaced molybdenum disulfide boron nitride. Boron nitride is a totally uh, non-toxic substance. It is a, you know, it's a uh, ingredient of cosmetics. The sheen which you see in nail polishes and lipsticks, that is because of boron nitride. So we, we thought it's a very safe compound. And we use a detergent as a surface active reagent. And because boron nitrate is just off white in color, very light in color, we could mix it with any fluorescent dye. We can't mix boron uh, molybdenum disulfide. As I said, it is blackish in color. So the color of the dye will be concealed. It will not, it, it will overcome the color of the dye. But in this case, because it is off white in color, you add a dye and the color of the dye will come. Uh, we use two types of dyes in our preliminary study. If the surface is, is dark, we use basic yellow 40, we get yellow colored fingerprints. And if the color is light, then we use brilliant blue G and you know we'll get blue colored fingerprints. So both the things are uh, taken care of, whether the color is light or uh, dark or it is multicolored, fluorescent dyes are there. You can choose any other dye also, but as I said, we started with these two dyes. Mix them together, it's very simple. No sophisticated instrument, no costly equipment is required. Boron nitrate plus the one of the dye and uh, three or four drops of a liquid detergent. And this lifts fingerprints from moist items, from those which have been buried under soil or ice, those which have been removed from arson sites, and even the ordinary uh, you know, conventional crime scene evidence. This has got very broad spectrum applications. We tried various metals, steel, iron, some of them even copper alloys, brass, bronze, and various plastic items like vinyl, lamination, polythene sheets, OHP sheets, ceramic tiles, crockery items, and glass, both plain as well as uh, the colored ones. Show you the results. This aluminum foil was submerged under water for up till 118 hours. Remember with Rose Bengal composition, it was just 12 hours. But even after 118 hours, it is giving very clear fingerprints. The dye is basic yellow. You can see the yellow color dye is there. And even if it is faint, we can illuminate it with ultraviolet light and uh, it shows a yellowish green fluorescence. Then this aluminum foil was buried under ice for 12 hours. It has become crumpled, but the fingerprint is still very clear. Lamination sheet buried under soil for soil rather. 10 hours, the fingerprint is again clear. And this we are still carrying on, uh, slowly increasing the temperature. We have gone up to 260 degrees centigrade. We heat it. We heat it in presence of newspapers and filter paper so that soot is also generated. That is to imitate actual crimes, uh, arson scenes. Thereafter, we spray it with water. Because, you know, in actual arson scenes, before the fingerprint expert arrives, the fire brigade personnel are, are there. It is not their duty to preserve the evidence. So randomly they spray water. Their duty is to douse the fire. So the, uh, the, the crime evidence with the forensic scientist gets is already you know, heated up and already wet. So in order to create that scene, we first heat them in oven in presence of filter papers and newspapers to generate soot. Thereafter, we spray water on them. And thereafter we spray our fingerprint reagent and up till 260 degrees centigrade, we have got very clear fingerprints and we are proceeding further by increasing the temperature at regular intervals.
Now, this is a dry item. I won't show more of, more, much of them. It is on glass, but it works on thermocol, it works on plastic, it works on steel also. The advantage is, as I said, boron nitrate is pretty non toxic. It is very cheap as compared to molybdenum disulfide, very easy to use, and it is fluorescent. And I have, I have shown you it has got multifarious applications. So I think that is the end of my talk.